So I'm talking about something called the Heritage Information Access Strategy. So I'm going to give you a, a little bit, a bit like Robin this morning talked through the shared strategy. And you're going to get the first slides talking about this broader strategy that we're initiating in England. And then I'm going to try and sort of perhaps set it within the context that we've, of, the, of the more specific things we've been discussing in this session. And particularly trying to sort of think about some of the issues that, that our heritage information access strategy is going to raise in terms of perspectives on national, regional, interregional, hence my question, and the local access for historic environment information. Did it work? No. Did it once? There we go. So what is this information access strategy? It's sort of a historic England initiative which we're to lead in and taking forward, but particularly with key partners and stakeholders in the sector in, in England and to a degree across the UK with obviously partners in Scotland Wales and other UK agencies related through Oasis and Herald. I'll talk a little bit more about that. Um, just to set the, the thing precisely uh, in where it stands, it's part now of our Historic England Corporate Plan for 20. 15 to 18. So we're looking at a sort of three-year time scale for this work in particular, which I think is an interesting contrast with, with the Scottish strategy being more longer, longer term. And the actual objective that sits in the, in the, for the strategy within that corporate plan is that with our partners, we will improve access to information through historic environment records, explore ways of moving forward towards a single means of accessing historic environment information nationally. We've just embedded that uh, corporate plan target in our thing. Why is that got a blur in the corner? Oh, I guess you're, uh, there. there we go. Sorry, John. Um, we've got an action plan that was published in April. Yeah, move the water, not the machine. <laughs> Cunning. <laughs> and that's published, there's a web address up there who actually wants to look at the details of the action plan of how we're actually planning to deliver that target. But broadly, in summary, there are, there are you know, as everyone knows, powerful drivers about making the information about the historic environment more accessible. Social media explosion and other information technologies are making it uh, much more possible to do information sharing. And we've talked you know, in this session particularly about data mining and harvesting of large data sets is becoming a reality. The data sets about our historic environment, especially local authority ones, are support owners, communities, heritage managers and developers, and they are central to the planning law and national guidance. And of course, effective sharing and of the understanding of heritage significance has therefore never been more important in support of these faster and better decision-making possibilities. And Historic England therefore is going to deliver a heritage information access strategy to help the sector. And I think that's enough of that. Robin had this slide up this morning, <laughs> so I recognise it, but these are the sort of eight principles. Robin talked about principles in Scotland. We have eight in England, there's no implication whether it's more or less. But the crucial one, perhaps in this context, that I always like to focus on is principle one, is that local authority HERs should be the first point of call for and primary trusted source of investigative research data and knowledge. I think that's the way sort of we build the others on. But there are others that, that cover things like museum archive and, and what we might do with physical archives. So the, the principle eight is digital data should be supported by material archives in safe repositories accessible to the public. So from having put those, those principles out, I think uh, I'm always struck by the, the, the idea that they're, they're a starting point. I think Bob made that, that key point that we, if we were starting from scratch, we might not start. You know, we would start from scratch, but we're not starting from scratch. And some of those principles are to some extent to set out where we think we're starting from and, and create a sort of a common starting point for all the different partners in the sector that we, we kind of need help with in actually to deliver this strategy and, to, and to, to take that forward together. Where are we so far with the strategy? Well, we've had an initiation phase for about last year, completed things like setting up governance. We've started on communications internally, obviously for us in historically, we've had a lot of change in the last year. So communicating all this sort of as on top of the changes to the organization has, has, has been a task in itself. We've set up an external advisory board. I'll, I'll bring that in at the end. 
we did a, a quite a wide ranging literature review. There's a lot of work being done in this area in all sorts of areas of academic, all the work that's been done on Oasis held in the past. And a particular piece of work I just wanted to talk a little bit more about is something called business process mapping for historic environment information. We've actually commissioned some work, again, part of our sort of changes within Historic England to look at how we share data critically from our own systems with people just outside the organisation, particularly HERs and academics who are doing large, wide national projects using our data and sort of trying to understand how information sharing takes place. And we're now in the process of sort of moving into actually building some work packages and we've made business cases which are important to actually get resources to follow this through and we're going to do more about communicating that as, as we go forward. For those who've never seen business process mapping, maybe never want to, but just to sort of try and explain roughly what it is, the idea here is to sort of have different bodies who take part in the process. And you can see if you can read sideways, if it's a challenge, so the, the two at the top are, for instance, our, our English Heritage National Mapping Programme, EH Archives, then local authority HERs, and in this case, the example was sort of looking at the, the Englade project, if people know that, the Oxford University one, that's doing sort of big data mining work, to try and see how those different bodies or organisations are actually sharing data across each other. It's quite a high level mapping process, but it, I believe it is, a, it is a useful one, and we've done a lot more as well with, with our own internal systems as well, at, at looking at what key bits of information and what key processes are important in how we want to share information. And then just to put this up as a, a, a point, uh, again, it's come out of this business process mapping work, and this is a, a revamped model that some people may have seen earlier, kind of models that we've been trying to produce, we call them sort of cartoons of, again, to give a flavour of the sort of information that we're trying to talk about. I'm going to see if that works, yeah. So sort of thinking about what we mean in terms of local, in, uh, regional, interregional, and national data. In this case, clearly sort of in, in what we're talking about is a, a process in the strategy of bringing together existing information sources. So we're not talking about necessarily building a completely new system. It's actually sort of how we're actually going to join up a lot of the existing information. And in this case, obviously the local and regional information we see provided by the HR records. Uh, at a national level, we're seeing the expanded, potentially work on the expanded Heritage Gateway as a national portal to provide a, a national overview of information coming from the different HERs around the country. And then I've, I've brought up the other one, which is this thing I want to sort of come on to later, <laughs> how much time I have left, uh, about how we might search across those different resources, particularly the sort of the, at the local and local, how we search at an interregional level. So where we actually need to understand the information that is held by more than one HER. And I think that might be the sort of challenges where some of the sort of big, big data technologies, whether, it, whether it's actually big data, but certainly big data type of technologies might be of use. Um, but how do we sort of how would we tackle questions and queries along, along those lines? These national, regional, interregional, and local questions. The vision in HIAS is provide that we are trying to provide in responses to national and subnational scale queries, brackets where multiple local queries would be unduly burdensome. So we're not trying to take away the the, uh, the ability of HRs to do their own query, but I think it, it's trying to understand where there might be circumstances that you just cannot get the full view of the information by going to separate bodies. Or there's an awful lot of work involved, as the Englade project found, not surprisingly, in actually putting all that information together. And the sort of things we want to follow are then like understanding research questions, how we go forward and what are the, the, the research questions that, that shape the scale and the scope of those queries. Again, we have research frameworks and research themes that are both are a, in some cases national, regional, and they're interregional, things like the Mesolithic, and they also obviously have local research questions. And I think that sort of that, that's, that's also part of something we want to feed into the mix. We're looking at new ways that we can build, build better research frameworks, and my colleague uh, Dan Miles is looking into this in terms of bringing together perhaps, some, we've talked about standardized terms and vocabularies and looked at heritage 
data and the Senegal project and the linked open data possibilities this morning. I think there's more that can be done in terms of how we might build up some of those relationships for research questions. Just an, a kind of example, again, getting down into sort of some, some, some real, real issues of, of where this could be useful. I mean, there was a presentation about HS2, and clearly I think that's raised a, quite a lot of questions and, and ideas. And I think it was good, again, the discussion this morning where we talked about the example of a, a project that went well because they planned well ahead. And I am really pleased to see that the HS2 team and Helen Glass has been really talking about archiving. We had archive workshops now, you know, like the, in what, whatever it is, two, certainly one or two years in advance of what, even whether the project is starting, they are thinking about the needs of what the archiving will be and the data sharing will be. And I think that is the, can only be a good thing. But certainly, as I've just alluded to there, there are going to be lots of issues around different local authority records, different types of investigations and methodologies that will be involved. And it's going to be a complex mix of information. So I think that may provide uh, a, a useful sounding board for the kind of big data crunching that we might consider doing. To give you some view, I don't know how well you can read that, just give you a sense of, of what this HIAS strategy is likely to cover. We're, we're planning a, a range of work packages and I put at the top there, again you can see the roles, roles and responsibilities hopefully up here at the top the first thing we need to do, and Robin emphasised this morning, how important it will be to kind of get shared responsibility and a shared understanding for who is actually going to have to do a lot of this work. Without going into too much detail on there, the, the, the broad idea, as you can see, the second one there is something called collecting and validating data, but it's basically down to there she is, <laughs> Herald, Herald, the ADS and Herald, and that's the sort of where the Oasis upgrade project is seen as, as being largely the main part of that, that particular work package. As you see, there's another work package we, we're envisaging led by HERs, uh, and we're talking very much with the HER sector about how we're going to do that and, and hopefully have their input and their lead on what is actually going to be the most suitable way to take a lot of this forward for HERs. Other things like Heritage Gateway, having a, a uh, a national security copy of information, maritime HERs, and for ourselves, how we're going to actually record our own internal data. If people are aware of what AMI is, that was the internal old English heritage uh, database for recording events. Martin can talk more about that. Um, and those packages really are, are being led by different people. So there's, there's quite a lot involved in this, and it, it clearly isn't just about sort of a, an oasis upgrade, that's just one part of a, of a broader approach. Uh, again, just to give a, a flavour of who's going to be involved, we have an, at the moment an internal programme board headed by Steve Tro, who was speaking here on whatever day was, Wednesday, wasn't it? Um, but a, a wide range of, of, of people on the advisory board already, and it, it could grow. Certainly our, our historic England are there, but we have Alveo, and we're inviting HER, yeah, which the Algeo HER committee members onto the board as well. The IHBC, IFA, CBA, ADS. You can you can read those yourselves, I think. But it, we're we're trying to build up a broad base of advice on how to take that forward. The final thing I wanted to put up, having mostly talked about the strategy, because I think that's what people wanted me to, to put up. I wanted to try and sort of also bring in some of the things that have come out of my own personal work and research in this area you know, as part of things like developing heritage data and the linked data work, which I think are relevant and which the strategy is itself going to have to sort of address to some degree, particularly with this idea of how we would do cross-border or inter-regional searching. There are technologies like linked open data and certainly big data technologies for interoperability, but they do blur some of the boundaries. We've talked about sort of more dynamic data, more dynamic information, and how that may, how using linked data may change some of these things. And I think one of the things I want to sort of emphasize from the research side is that we, we, we have done developments using semantic technologies in the STAR project, doing research projects that 
span across a, a range of different data sets from completely different organizations. But the point to bear in mind is also that the data is complex. And we talk about very much about data as though it's just one thing. And I think part of our knowledge and our skills as historic environment professionals is actually being able to interpret the data. And we, a lot of archaeological data is actually interpretation. It's not just atomic data. I mean, some of it is, but it's not the sort of atomic data that Tesco's and Sainsbury's hold about their kind of customer information base. I think we shouldn't lose sight of that, that you can't just put all our data into one thing and sort of treat it all the same. However, you know, so, whoa, <laughs> I pressed the wrong button there, didn't I? Um, so just making the point, even with sort of linked data and research data um, and semantic technologies, we did sort of tend to lean towards the idea that some of these archaeological practices where we have stages of, of data for say like what we come off with excavation is different uh, 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 to what we do through the process of analysis or data changes through the process of analysis we know that we update that data it's not and then and then we publish data in a sort of final publication format and then we go back to the archive and I sort of put that circular diagram up on the right just to say it is a circle that we actually build our research on that research cycle. So that needs to be borne in mind as well as, as, as when we look at sort of these, some of these new technologies coming forward, that we don't lose sight of our, our knowledge base there. And finally, just to conclude, sort of one of the things I'd like to say is that the technologies are being developed, but I think the challenge that I was talking about this morning, that there, is there a common will for sharing archaeological data openly in the interests of improving research methods? And hopefully that's the last one. Thank you.